Hello, my name is Ross Kazarski, and this is my colleague, Anthony Vicari. We're with our Advanced Materials Intelligence Group here at Lux Research, and our team recently completed an analysis, technology scouting, and looking at the market size of 3D printing technologies. And it seems like in the press, some reporters are talking about the 3D printing industry being bigger than the internet and the printing press combined. Others are discussing the possibilities and intellectual property and ethical considerations around 3D printing weapons or personalized drones or personalized medicine even. So given all of that, let me put it to you, what is the reality on the ground here? Well, the truth is that 3D printing really does have a lot of unique capabilities as a manufacturing technology. Things like the ability to increase materials utilization, especially when producing parts with complex shapes out of expensive materials. Um, it can reduce the production cost of custom or unique, art, unique goods, such as prototypes or small volume production runs, and even enable the one-step production of multifunctional or multi-material objects. On the other hand, realizing that potential in the marketplace is going to require a number of continued commercialization and technical advances. These include things like reducing the price of printable materials and the cost of printers, as well as uh, raising the technical performance, such as resolution, throughput, and other properties. So overall then, it's not only the material cost, which is a challenge, but also material performance and selection and availability of these materials themselves. So let's flip that around for a second. With these challenges, certainly comes great opportunity for innovation, especially for large chemical and material companies who could enter this space and start to capture some of this burgeoning market opportunity. That's true, and the opportunity to sell these materials at a relatively high markup is certainly attractive. And particularly as 3D printing moves beyond just prototyping applications into production of end-use parts, um, demand from end users for materials that meet their specific re performance requirements, as well as have a price point that's acceptable given the larger volumes they're going to need, will only increase. So let's take a moment to review here. 3D printing offers a number of interesting benefits and opportunities in terms of enhanced materials utilization, part consolidation, multifunctionality, on-demand and, and custom fabrication, but also comes with a number of commercialization challenges. So Anthony, let me put it to you here, with this interplay between benefits and challenges, what's the state of the industry today and what are your views on its near-term and long-term potential? As the industry stands today, it's been built up over several decades primarily to serve the needs of prototyping applications in aerospace, defense, medical, and automotive markets. However, in the past several years, we've noticed some changes in this direction. On the one hand, we have the rise of dozens of companies producing low-cost, lower-performance printers for the um, end consumer segment for purchase by, by consumers to use to make parts in their own homes. On the other hand, we've seen advances in the state of the art from the existing leaders, companies like EOS, Arcam, 3D Systems, and Stratasys, um, that have developed their technologies to the point where there are now companies manufacturing end-use parts in applications from jet engines, um, surgical tools, orthopedic implants, and e even unmanned aircraft. Let's break this down for a second. Sounds like you've touched on two major sub-segments of the 3D printing market. On the one hand, it's quite easy to see why industrial applications like aerospace and automotive and medical would be attracted to the lightweighting, part consolidation, uh, enhanced materials utilization benefits of 3D printing. But on the other hand, we have the consumer segment, and it seems like every week there's a new announcement in the popular press about a new 3D printable toy or writing utensil or other kind of knick-knack, even oversubscribed Kickstarter projects. So let me put it to you, Anthony. Do you think that the actual market opportunity in the consumer segment will actually live up to all of this hype and excitement? As you say, there are these, these overfunded Kickstarter projects, and there are rising sales figures from the consumer-facing 3D printer companies, indicating that there really is an interest in having access to this technology on a wider scale. Um, however, home users of 3D printers are going to have relatively low utilization compared to industrial users. Um, and also, these uh, materials and printers going into that segment are at the lowest end of the, of the cost spectrum. As a result, the total market opportunity in the consumer segment is not going to be more than a fraction of the overall 3D printing market. However, that said, all of the hype and all of the public interest focused on 3D printing as a result of the consumer market segment 
is going to drive continued development of the industrial segments where the real growth is going to be. Well, thank you, Anthony, and thank you all for joining us. For more information about our 3D printing analyses or other technology scouting on emerging material technologies, please visit our website at luxresearchinc.com or email us at info at luxresearchinc.com.